to it and let's actually start a webinar. We're going to create our, our, our webinar on gotowebinar.com. I'm going to log in. I have a, uh, a separate training account here uh, so that I can do this and not compromise anything that I have cooking. I am working with, with a number of clients and I'm doing some work with them and I don't want all of that information um, you know spread all over the web because it what you're going to see here is just again a look inside so here we go here is a look at uh, at uh, at the behind the scenes go to webinar and this is a my training my little new training account all right so we're going to create a new webinar. Now you see here at go to webinar, you can create different kinds of meetings and, and webinars. Um, and we're going to create one from the start, you know, right from start. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to show you, um, you know, how you can, uh, you can go over there and get some other information, go to webinar. One of the reasons I like it as a platform and a company is that they have an awful lot of really, really neat, uh, videos and tutorials and those videos and tutorials are very very helpful so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel I will show you where to go and get those but in the meantime I want to start a webinar and uh, and we'll start one in and show you exactly how easy it is so it's um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to time this too and we'll see exactly how long it takes so we're going to schedule a webinar we hit schedule a webinar here and the first thing it asks you for is a title and a description now if you have other other things that you've been doing and other webinars you can actually kind of reload them and just you know recreate them but we're going to call this one i'm going to uh, call this one uh, 10 uh 10 copyright commandments that keep bloggers that keep real estate bloggers out of trouble how about that keep real estate Yeah, blogging and uh, and copyright don't really mix very very well in real estate, and that's one of the trainings I do. I want you to keep a couple of uh, couple of things in mind when you're creating a webinar name. Uh, this is something that you want to make SEO friendly. You want it to be catchy. You want it to be hooky. You want it to grab the attention of your audience. So I could I could have said you know copyright things to know. I could say you know copyright for real estate bloggers. I could say a lot of things, but I want it to be active. I want it to speak to a result. You know, there has to be a result. The result is that if you follow the rules and you follow copyright uh, uh, policies and procedures in the right way, that, uh, that you're going to stay out of trouble. Because if you don't, you know, if you do things wrong, you know, if you take other people's intellectual property, if you swipe that, whether you know it or not, uh, you can get in trouble. And, uh, and, and so you want to have a very, very hooky uh, ho uh, headline. Um, and then you want a description. And then uh, we'll just say this is uh, a webinar about uh, Again, that would be a longer uh, description. What you want to do is you, and what you'll have is a planning guide. I'm going to give you a worksheet and a planning guide that will let you plan all of this in advance. So it will ask you to write a title and a description, uh, a webinar name, a description. You can create that on a worksheet and then just fill that in. And that will make it much easier for you. So when you log into the platform um, on Tuesday, you will have all of that information and you can use that. Uh, you can also go to go to webinar and set up a 30 day trial where you can use the platform and not have to pay anything for it. My suggestion is that you take a look at what we're doing here, see what's involved and and then go and actually use your worksheet, create a lot of this information on the worksheet first so that when your 30 day trial starts, you really get the best uh, and the most out of it. If you start the trial first, and then you go back and you start to look at all of the videos and uh, and, and start to work with the, with the worksheets. It may be a week or two actually before you actually get around to making one and then you know half of your trial is up. So my suggestion is is that you take a look at this now 
don't register yet. Don't register for your trial if you don't have GoToWebinar, um, but put to work with your worksheets and get this information in. Uh, you want to, uh, you have a total of 2,048 maximum characters in this description box. Uh, you don't need a really long description, uh, but you do, you know, you, you do want to be able to tell people enough about what your webinar is going to be about that it gets them, gets them in there. If you're going to be talking about, uh, you know, how to stage, how, you know, how to stage your home prior to a sale, you know, you might want to get into a little bit more uh, detail. If you're talking about lending and you're talking about dealing with some credit issues, you know, you want a really, really hooky headline and then you want to be able to give them a little bit of the, um, about the features and the benefits. Always tie features with benefits. It's, it's, it's about what people are really looking to accomplish, what they want to achieve. You know, at the end of the day, what are they going to get out of whatever it is you're sharing with them? So don't make it about the tool. Don't make it about the information. Make it about the benefit that your attendee will receive at the end of the day when that, after, after the webinar is finished. What will they go home with? Uh, you know, from webinar fever, what you're going to be leaving with at the end of the day, at the end of the training, is an ability to to go and start your own webinar, to to, to know what tools you have to use, uh, to to know how to write a hooky headline, to be able to to do all of this stuff and and do it in a way that will attract attendees and build your business, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, you know, schedule it in advance. Uh, you know, today is March 24th. Probably a good time to be scheduling something is is a couple weeks out. Um, a lot of people are, you know, think that Monday is a terrible day for deadlines. I'm I'm a client uh, for webinars, and I'm inclined to agree. Tuesday through Thursday are good. Um, I hear some people saying Friday is terrible. To be honest, I like Fridays. I also like Saturdays. Uh, but you know. You take a look at your audience, you know, connect with your, with your market, find out when people would like to, uh, to attend a webinar. Um, and remember that, you know, a live webinar is, is very, very good. So we'll just say April 11th. How about that? We'll say this is going to be April 11th from, uh, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, and we're going to schedule this uh, Pacific time. Uh, you have an opportunity here to, uh, to, for, to establish a recurring webinar, you may want to establish a series of webinars. And if you do that, then, uh, then you will have uh, an ability to share links and sign-ins that people don't have to uh, uh, get confused about. Um, in the old days, it was very, very hard to do this when I first started doing webinars. Uh, when, in fact, when we first started doing No Blogger Left Behind, it was, I mean, part of, part of the nightmare about doing webinars in those days was that you couldn't schedule recur, you know, in the early parts of the of Don't Blog Left Behind, you couldn't schedule the recurring webinars. Um, and every single week, you know, people had to get another notice and another link. And, you know, sometimes they were using, you know, people were using the wrong link to sign in and, and they were confused and, and unhappy. And, and, and it, you know, the technology just wasn't evolved as it is right now. So if you are scheduling a, uh, a weekly webinar, let's say, which I'm going to be doing for No Blogger Left Behind very shortly, I'll have a weekly webinar for the people in, in the class, um, you'll be able to use the same link every single time. Uh, you may want to do that daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, uh, and, uh, and, and use that. Uh, again, there's the, some real good training about that. You have an ability to edit the audio conference options. And again, there are different possibilities. So. Uh, what I do, and, and I, I stay with the default settings here, I let people make their own choice. I, they can use the, the VoIP, which, which is, you know, listening at your, at your computer, using the microphones and speakers attached to your computer, um, or uh, a long distance number. So, you know, each webinar, a go to webinar is assigned, uh, you know, its own, its own uh, telephone number. Uh, or you can use your own conference call service if you like and, um, and, and do that as well. So you have all those options. Uh, just so that you know, the most reliable way of listening to a webinar and hearing a webinar is with the telephone. So you can use that. You can, you can disable the, v, the, the VoIP. Uh, a lot of people don't have real good connections or may not have good connections. Um, and certainly a lot of people who don't have good connections don't realize that and they're very very uh, quick and happy to uh, 
to assign blame to the webinar platform, to the webinar presenter. So you have a lot of that type of, 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 uh, of human dynamic that happens around the technology. Um, you know, you can limit your limit that kind of discussion by just 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 letting them use their number. Um, it's a long distance number. It, you know, most people don't have to worry about long distance charges with cell phones anymore. So that's not as big an issue. Uh, you can, you know, get a toll free number from them if you want. Of course, there's some additional uh, uh, charges in, involved with that. Um, panelists are a really great idea. Uh, panelists, if you want to work with panelists and, and people, uh, you know, I've done this and, and I'll be doing a, a lot of this uh, moving forward again. Uh, you can invite panelists into your webinar by putting their names and addresses here, uh, email addresses. And what will happen when you put a panelist into a program, it will send them an email address. Now, obviously, you're going to want to talk to a panelist before you send them an email address and say, you know, I'm having a webinar in such and such a day on on, on April 11th, you know, would you like to join my webinar about copyright? Would you like to be part of that as a panelist? And you want to have that uh, discussion with somebody uh, prior to inviting them. Otherwise, they won't know, you know, that uh, that you're doing that. So, again, that's part of a planning that's, that's going to be appearing on a checklist. We have a special checklist for working with panelists and, and guests. And I think that's a really, really neat thing to be able to do. It makes it a lot more interactive. It makes it a lot more interesting. Uh, up here, there's a link um, that says, see how to web, how to create a webinar in three easy steps. And, you know, again, this is really, really a uh, neat platform for training. Uh, schedule it, brand it, and uh, and create a registration. These are the three steps, and, uh, and they have some really, really great training here. Um, my suggestion is, is that when you do activate your free month of subscription that you go in there and you do you know do their little uh their little technical training and get up to speed on that because that's very very helpful and then create a webinar from scratch uh that is a practice webinar don't just start a webinar and create a real webinar uh before you've done something that you know totally from scratch uh, that you have done for practice at least do one webinar where you have invited a couple of people who are going to be looking at this on a couple of different types of browsers. Uh, get somebody to look, watch it on a Mac, get somebody to watch it on a PC, and then run a couple of tests and see how that goes, uh, you know, just so that you're comfortable and you don't get to the webinar at the end of the day and, and find out that you've got a problem. Uh, Branding and theme, you know, you can go, you can upload a logo here for yourself. I'm not going to go through all of this because because it's very, very simple. You know, you just click on the link, you pick a file from your computer and you upload it. Uh, it can, uh, the logo image can be up to 400 by 200 pixels. Uh, you can choose a theme image. Uh, there is no image there, but you can upload an image here. It will appear in the right hand column of the um, of the registration page and then there's a webinar waiting room you can fill that in uh, you can change the color of the waiting room you can your logo will appear here uh, you can have another custom image and you can have you know a picture of of yourself as a presenter and then when the webinar is starting and before you actually start your presentation, it's, it's, it's a page that holds people's attention, uh, you know, in, in the moments preceding the actual startup of the webinar. So you have a great deal of, 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 of an ability to customize that. And then you can preview the theme, you can preview the waiting room, you can see what it looks like uh, and, and read that. And then, of course, if you see anything that needs to be fixed, you can always go back and you can change it. Uh, because everything that you've done here is is editable. Um, do it, you know the registration? Very very important page here. Okay, and the, and, and and it's important because a lot of the default settings on this page um, are settings that you probably want to disable. Um, it's an important rule of thumb to know is that uh, less is more re relative to registration. The more information you ask people for, the fewer people are going to come and actually register for your webinar. People don't want to give you a lot of information. 
Um, the most you want to ask for is their name and email address. And sometimes you only want to ask for their email address um, for a webinar. Uh, you may not need a whole bunch of information. You know, once you have it, um, you're great. I would say deselect anything that you, that is not absolutely essential. Uh, you don't need their phone number. You don't need their industry. You don't need their or, you know, organization. Uh, you, for go to webinar, you do have to have first name, last name, and email address. So, you know, be aware of that. Uh, there will be additional information moving, uh, you know, in, in another video about ways you can actually collect these names on your list. Uh, because remember, it's about building a list. It's about building your list and, uh, and, and putting people and, you know, into a sales funnel where you have an opportunity to, to connect with them. Uh, to share information and to uh, you know to have other you know other channels open to you um, just because somebody registers at go to webinar for your registration does not mean that you have uh, permission to market to them uh, and and you really want to be able to have permission to market to people and to be able to send them follow-up emails uh, it does, their names don't go on to an autoresponder list just because they register on GoToWebinar. There are a couple of tools that you can use uh, that will make that happen. Those are called webinar bridges. Uh, you can use a webinar bridge. There's a webinar bridge for, for WordPress that works well. And there's another webinar bridge that you can use for any website, any blog uh, that will let you create a page. Uh, and uh, and in, you know your own registration page, and then have people sign up for the webinar on that page, uh, and it will do two things simultaneously. Number one, it will sign them up for the webinar, and their name will appear on the registration list. And number two, their name will appear on your autoresponder list. Those webinar bridges do not work with all autoresponders. Uh, if you're working with, uh, with 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 one of the you know, really, really premier tools like Aweber or Get Response or Eye Contact. You can, you can do that kind of thing. Um, but uh, you know, for some of them, you can't. They don't necessarily work with 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 some of the other ones. Um, I'm also using a, a, an, a, an autoresponder called Instant Customer. There will be some additional training about that, and there will be a separate video about webinar bridges because I think a webinar bridge is very, very important. You hate to be you know, going into webinar delivery and, and creating webinars if you're not going to be able to have an easy way to, to put those people on your list and be able to stay in touch with them on a regular basis. Um, so webinar bridge is very, very important and, and, and definitely check that one out. Uh, and now you can also create some questions for a survey. And, uh, and, and this is a survey that people will get when they register. So it, you could make it required or not required. Um, if, uh, boy, uh, you know, I can uh, ask a question here about, about copyright. You know, do you, uh, do you use Creative Commons licensing on your blog, all right, and 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 the Creative Commons licensing is is a uh, is a is a way that lets you share your content with your readers and with other people. Uh, I could ask, I could, I could make it one of two questions. I could say yes or no. Um, that creates a question on my registration page. I can make it required or not. Again, if I make it required. Uh, people may not want to fill it out and they may not register. So I, I, I don't ever make anything required. Not that I might not one of these days, but, but I, again, uh, less is more. Uh, so having a re something there is, is, is really neat. It can give you a little bit of insight into your audience. There are times when I'm doing uh, webinars about blogging. There are times when I'm working with, 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 you know, newbies and people who are still new to to blogging who don't really know a lot and there are other times when I have an audience uh, that may have been with me you know for for years already that has been through no blogger left behind that may be you know producing multiple blogs and um, you know and and the questions and the the answers will will vary and and my delivery will vary uh, about blogging depending upon the 
uh, the level of, of interest and the level of savvy and, and knowledge about any given topic. And you'll find that as well. So having a little bit of a survey is kind of neat. You can ask, you know, you can create one question, you can create multiple questions, and then those questions will actually appear on the survey. Um, after they register, you can say, okay, they will receive an email with information about joining the webinar. That can be either an automatic or something that is subject for, to your approval. Uh, you can redirect the registrants to your website if you like. Uh, let's, ta let's take a look. I'll, I'll just, um, I'll do, I'll send them here to, how about to no blogger left behind. And then we can preview it. Now, why would you want to uh, to approve somebody who's who's joining your webinar? Well, you know, one of the reasons you may want to approve somebody joining the webinar is if you're doing something to uh, you know to engage an audience. You may even have some interaction. You may be inviting people to chat with you. You may be doing a lot. Uh, you may be working with uh, home buyers or prospective home buyers. You may be working and talking to prospective home sellers. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe you don't want other realtors from other offices in town to be on the same webinar talking to you, you know, prospects that you're working with. So if there is a likelihood that people are signing up and doing that, that becomes a reason that you may want to uh, get an approval. Uh, I think there's, there's another thing, another way to handle that. And one of the ways that you can handle that kind of, uh, of, of approval is actually you can take a look at your registration list prior to the webinar and you can, you know, remove people from, from the webinar also. So, I mean, that's, that's another way of, of doing that. Um, we can preview our page here. So here's what our page looks like. So I'm only asking for the first name and the last name. Uh, we have our title, we have our, our, our short description. And here is our, um, our question. And people will fill that in. Let's see here. Fran Torson. Fran, uh, yeah, use that. And I can register. When I register, I click. The, okay, this is a preview, so maybe this this is not working because it's a preview. So sorry about that. Okay, but it's a good preview. So we close that um, and then I can save. What will happen is when I save this whole setup, it will email me the invitation and, and here it is right here. So this appears as the most recent uh, webinar in my list. You could go back and you can, uh, you know, edit any part of that that you like. You can also add it to your Outlook calendar. Again, I really, really suggest that you go over to go to webinar, to the FAQs and all of these really, really neat training videos. Uh, they have some very, very good resources uh, for getting organized. Uh, go to meeting organizer training, attendee quick start. They have some phenomenal stuff here um, that you can use. Uh, the other thing that will be fun and that I, I'm looking forward to trying when I'm not doing it live, I'm going to do it very, very soon, is this new HD Faces. And that is a new uh, a new program that just came out of beta. Let's see. Yeah, this is a, a pretty neat uh, uh, platform that will let you actually uh, present yourself to your folks with the... Um, with your presentation. And again, this just came out of beta. I haven't seen anybody doing it real well yet other than on the tutorial videos. And I was a little reluctant to do that uh, before I had a chance to test it out myself. So that's something I would like to do very, very, very soon. So again, take a look at these videos, uh, spend some time, really look at all of them. And then, you know, when, you know, take a, take, take one of those videos and, um, and then, and then do it, you know, do what they say, you know, do the, do the uh, quick start program, uh, you know, plan a meeting, present in a meeting and, and do that. Um, when you do the, uh, do your 30 day, um, 30 day account, you'll have access to two, two platforms. Uh, actually one is called my meetings and one is called my webinar. So they're a little bit different. 
Um, I'm using webinars for trainings. I'll be talking more about meetings uh, again at, at some point in time uh, in, in the training here. But for the purposes of our discussion right now, we are talking about webinars.